Good day guys. Today we'll cover this subject, discovering the matrix and joining the dot. And today we'll, while we're discovering the matrix and linking the events, which are sometimes decades apart, we'll journey through a series of disasters and atrocities, looking at some interesting features about them to build our knowledge as we go. We'll use Google Earth and we'll plot these events one by one to show the hidden symbolism as we connect them together. Periodically, we'll use scriptural descriptions to validate our discoveries. So let's get started. Now, I'd not like to spend too much time on this Illuminati card game. There's plenty of people on YouTube who've done some fantastic breakdowns of the information within this game. Safe to say that it's been out for roughly 30 years, and as its name says there, it's a game of conspiracy. And I'd like to show you today that that's absolutely true, that we are living in a reality that is a game of conspiracy and the world is waking up to this. Let's just uh, get started with some of these cards for a start, and we can see this one, just the face page, is a pyramid. A pyramid is not your friend. In fact, right from biblical times, Moses was leading the people out of Egypt, away from these pyramids. So we can see the all-seeing eye of Lucifer, and we can see the hand uh, on this puppet, and we are all puppets in, in many ways. Some of the cards that come out foretell events well in advance, and I believe these cards here came out around 1995, which is about five or six years before 2001. And you can see on the one on the left, it's an obvious depiction of the Twin Towers. And of course, on the same day on 911, we've got the Pentagon going up. Revelation 911, here it is, Revelation 9, we'll go down to Revelation 911, and had the king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in Greek tongue, had his name Apollyon, or commonly known these days as Apollo, he depicts uh, the devil. And we can uh, see from this event on the 911, it was a very devilish event. So what we'll do, we'll go into Google Earth now, and we'll pin a spot for Ground Zero at 911. That's New York. So the next one we'll look at is the Deepwater Horizon in 2012, some 11 years later, and we'll put in a pin for that as well, and that's it there. Now, if uh, you can't remember the BP oil disaster, here is another Illuminati card, and here is a bird from that disaster. That's where uh, oil pumped into the Gulf of Mexico for many months, millions of gallons of oil, and the devastation is still being felt by the people in the Gulf states. It's a terrible disaster. But if you're going to have a conspiracy to take over the world, then an oil spill, you can see from the card here, is right in what you want to do. Now the next one we'd like to look at in this is Century 16 in Aurora Cinema, Century 16. And this was a fellow that went into a movie, a midnight showing of Batman, Dark Knight Rising, the name says it all there, and shot up a whole bunch of people in there. Now you'll see from the card here on the right hand side, it was made in 1995, yet the event happened in 2012. So we can see something pretty amazing is going on here. We can actually see that this is the same event. So we've got a building here with a raked edge on it, and we've got a building with a raked edge. We've got lines across the building, we've got lines across the building. We've got this part of the building here and the actual photo on the day blanked out. Over on this one, we've got a man standing there blanking the same area out. This is beyond doubt that it's the same card. And as I say, there's plenty of people that have done breakdowns of this. I'll do a, just a small extra little breakdown here because of the name century 16. Before we go there, we'll have a quick look here at Isaiah 29, 15 and 16 and it says here woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works are in the dark and they say who seeth us who knows us surely your turning things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's claim so if we go to our card and we have a look at century 16 we'll apply that scripture so here we go we know that century equals 100, and 100 plus 16 equals 116. Now we'll apply Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. They think that we don't know, we don't see, and because they turn things upside down, well, let's say now that we're onto them, and these very satanic people are being caught up with now. It's opening up, and 116 
upside down equals 911. Hey, well, what do you know? Let go to Aurora Cinema and put in a pin there. Aurora Cinema, and we put a cinema symbol there right over the top of their cinema. And we go back out now and have a look at uh, what we've got so far. And there is another one that, that happened about two weeks after that Aurora Cinema and was uh, a massacre at a Sikh temple. And I'm not sure whether you can recall this event, but let's see if we can find it here. And here it is, the Sikh temple of Wisconsin. And that was in 2012, it's called the Oak Creek uh, shooting. And that's where Wade Michael Page fatally shot six people here and wounded four others. So we'll pin that one as well on our Google Earth. And here it is up here, Sikh temple in Wisconsin. And then also, We'll go way back into the 1990s to the Oklahoma bombing where Timothy McVeigh bombed the Albert Marat building in Oklahoma. And so we've got a symbol here for him at the Oklahoma bombing. Now we've uh, got all our places in place, let's go back to Google Earth. And what we'll do now is we'll join those dots and we'll have a look at what we can see. Now looking at our pattern there, you can see that we've got a line here between the Aurora Cinema down to Deepwater Horizon that, what do you know, goes right through the Oklahoma bombing in Oklahoma City. Would that be coincidence? No, I don't think so. What are we looking at here? Well, let's take our symbols back out and we'll just get a cleaner look at what we're looking at over the top of the United States. And we'll apply that scripture, 29.16, again, and we'll turn it upside down and see what we've got. And I don't know about you, but that looks a little bit like a pyramid to me. Now, pyramids have got a long history all over the world. And I encourage you to get onto YouTube to a fellow called Carl Monk, who did a series called The Code. And he linked up all the pyramids worldwide mathematically and did a fantastic job of doing it very understandable if you can see it please go to that because you'll realize that there's something quite amazing going on when they all link up mathematically now what's the largest pyramid in the world well that's in uh, south america and that's been built to quetzalcoatl and quetzalcoatl who was he well he's the feathered serpent who's the serpent in the bible well in revelation 12:9. It describes it this way, and the great dragon was cast down, the old serpent, he that is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was cast down to earth and his angels were cast down with him. And in Revelation 22, it goes on, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So we know that the largest pyramid in the world has been built to a serpent god, and we know by the Bible that the serpent is describing the devil. So we can see that uh, the pyramids are not our friends at all. It's related directly to the devil. If we wanted to make this into a 3D pyramid, we would have to go down here somewhere and look at a place at this one. And I eyeballed it on the day, and this is Bloomington in Illinois. There it is. If we join up some dot and see what we can find there, we'll just put Bloomington, Illinois in the mix now. And we find that it makes a perfect 3D pyramid. Once I'd found uh, Bloomington, I zoomed in on it and spent many hours trying to find out what it was about Bloomington because I couldn't recall any massacre or anything happening there at all. And I was about to give up on the search when I saw my friend calling me on Skype. And he called me from overseas and said he just walked into a hotel room and found this in a drawer beside the bed because he'd known I'd been doing a little bit of research on Pyramid at the very moment that I'm seeing that he's rung and shown me that. I want to say that there is the supernatural. I had reached a point in this journey of discovering and joining these dots where I couldn't go any further. I was about to give up. Supernaturally, this guy calls from the other side of the world and shows me a photo of exactly what I'm looking at. That, friends, 
is the supernatural realm helping somebody over the hurdle. I'm not smart enough. I wasn't smart enough to get the next step. The supernatural in God allows this to go on. So I reinvigorated my search about Bloomington. And let's go and have a look at what it is in Bloomington. And we find that there is a street in Bloomington, and it's called Locust Street. The East and West Locust Street has an unusual feature. Now we've got Locust East and Locust West Street. And my friend uh, was talking to me on Skype, and he went to Empire Street. And he found 666 Empire Street, because he knows my study, is just there. I decided I'd reinvigorate my search here and, and re-intensify it, and I put in all the 666s that I could find on crossing roads over Locust Road. Why Locust? In the Bible, Locust figure heavily. And this is in the book of Joel, you see, Joel 1 to 3, an invasion of locusts. Hear this, you elders. Give ear all the ha inhabitants of the land. Has such a thing happened in your days or in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it. And let your children tell their children, and their children another generation, what the cutting locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the hopping locust has eaten. And what the hopping locust left, the destroying locust has eaten. Well, that's uh, pretty crazy stuff that we're finding a row in Bloomington in Illinois. And if you want to continue, Illinois... The last four letters uh, said backwards is Zion. Okay, so we've got a few things pulling us into this area. So let's now put in all the streets with 666 on them. As we click them in, and we'll click in all the various 666s along that road. Is this not amazing so far? Can you see something going on here? Can you see why the supernatural event of my friend showing me a pyramid so it would allow me to re-intensify my search into this particular small city? Something's going on here, but I didn't know what. That's just crazy. At about this time, I was doing some Bible study, and this is a letter I wrote, and you see I've taken out the names for their privacy their reasons and their email addresses. But you'll see that it was on the 7th of January. And I wrote this just after midnight. And I said, Hi Steve, I certainly don't wish to sound dramatic. But the Lord has been revealing much to me over the last few months. And then giving confirmation soon thereafter of the same information. And have a listen to this guys. Although I have little time to prepare for it for Friday, I'm feeling a degree of urgency to get the info out. I would like our participants to read the book of Joel, if they can possibly can, prior to Friday. So, going back here, that's the reason why. I knew I was being led to something, but I didn't know what, and I wanted as many eyes and ears on this as I could possibly get. So, on that night, January 2014, I showed this to my Bible study class as we were studying the book of Joel. But there's one other place I'd like to show you, because there's one other mention of locusts. And we started out here at Revelation 9:11, saying that they had a king over them of the bottomless pit, which is basically Satan. Now we'll come up here, and we'll go to Revelation 9, 3. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as scorpions have power. This... <laughs> This started to get to an amazing thing. We, I didn't know what it all meant. But I can tell you that there was one man at that Bible study. And appropriately, his name was Abraham. And Abraham was quite adamant that he wanted me to run a line from the Sikh temple down through here, down through Deepwater Horizon, and keep going. He wanted to see where it led. And he asked three times in front of a dozen people. So I did that and I used a light beam straight down through. From there, it continues on. Now, why have I used a light beam? That's a description that people gave at this particular pyramid that they saw a light shining up into the sky. So I've used the same with Google Earth. And I've done a light beam because Satan himself masquerades as light. So now, let's go and see where this leads.
right round the other side of the earth, it leads to here. This is Australia just here, and it leads down to this spot here. Now this was quite an unusual feature here, and I didn't know what it was. So on the 13th of January 2014, I put it on Facebook and asked my friends, would anyone like to offer a rational explanation to the several similar submarine geographical features on Google Earth at the following positions? using Perth, Western Australia as the starting reference point. And the first one I put here was Perth, 234 degrees, and see the distance there, 2,560 kilometers. That's what I asked my friends. My friend who sent me the photo of the pyramid got back to me and said, their survey line, they're surveying the sea floor for something. This is, or underwater, volcano. And here is another one just here. This looks like they've come out from Perth in Western Australia. You'll see the lines going all the way back to Perth in Western Australia. You can see Perth there. They've come out and they've come down here and they've started surveying. We don't know what for yet, but they've been doing very intensive surveying. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And from here to about here is almost 300 kilometers. And from here to here is about 80 to 85 kilometers. So it's quite a large area that they've done, but they've con continued at it. What happened there? Well, let's have a look at what the headlines were just two months later. That airplane from Malaysia, a Boeing 777 MH370, went missing two months after I put that up. The position... A couple of weeks later that they said that they were looking for debris was here. They've drawn a map and this was in the South China Morning Post on the 27th of March 2014. 2557 kilometers. This is where the authorities told the newspaper people that they were concentrating their search. This is the position that I asked, what's going on? Does anybody know why we've been led to this point? Now that's just crazy stuff, but there it is. And it happens to be on the same day, just coincidentally, that this is also in the same newspaper, Noah. As in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of Son of Man. They're telling us something. This is beyond impossible, but we got led there. When we concentrate our search a little further and we come down here, we'll put our aeroplane icon in where they were looking two weeks after it went missing. And there it is, right there. Once again, this is supernatural to get there. This was a man called Abraham at a Bible study class saying, draw that line. I want to see where it goes. Well, we wouldn't know for two months the significance of this. So revisiting this place after MH370 went missing, I started to concentrate my search yet again on what this was. What were they looking for? before MH370 went missing. Why did this aeroplane go missing? Why is it such a mystery? Where has it gone? Is this a sacrifice to Satan? Is it? It says that the beast will rise out of the sea. These are underground volcanoes. Has anybody seen on YouTube the amount of UFO lights that have been going into volcanoes in and around Mexico? Please get on there and have a look. There's lots. What's going on here? It looks like they've come out from Perth, gone up and down, up and down, up and down until they get to this spot. Then they've headed off in a straight line. Several hundred kilometres it goes in a dead straight line before it fades off at all. You can see it there. And it starts roughly at a volcano. What are they looking for? So let's have a look at where this one goes. And we'll follow it through. So we've drawn our line, you can see it there. We've drawn our line, I'll put it in again. There it goes. And now, we'll follow it to wherever it wants to go and see where it goes. We'll follow it back across the world. Here it comes. Here it comes. And, well, what do you know, folks? What do you know? It comes right back into Bloomington, right onto a road called Locust Road with 666s, six, six, the number of the beast in Revelation 13, 18. It describes the beast and the, to him who has wisdom, let him find what that number means, which is the number 
of man or mankind. Something's going on. Let's do a little bit of research on Bloomington. Just a little bit. Now remember, this was a Boeing 777 with a call sign MH370. And M is the 13th letter of the alphabet. H is the 8th letter of the alphabet. 13 plus 8 equals 21. 21 equals three sevens. What date did it go missing? Well, it was...